However, natural gas. Okay, now we talk about finally, we're going to talk about natural gas. Natural gas had a similar movement, not a good word here. What? However, natural gas had a similar movement. What what's the role of however here? If something is similar to the uh, the previous one, then why however? Can I say I love pizza, however, Sarah loves pizza? So you know that when you are given an IELTS task 1 academic report, you have a diagram that focuses on the events in the past. And you know you need to use past simple tense for the majority of your sentences. Or the diagram doesn't have any time frame and you basically use present simple. There are some instances that they give you, for instance, a map of what something looks like now and what it will look like in the future. So in these cases, you focus on the map as it is and use present simple. And then you look at the second map and focus on the events and the changes in the future, basically using future grammatical tenses. However, the trickiest, the most difficult one would be to have a diagram not two, not three, one single diagram that has information in the past, in the present tense, and in the future. That would be quite a challenge, right? Well, welcome to IELTS Jews, because we welcome challenges. Let's start assessing a report. And the rubric says, the graph below gives information from a 2008 report about consumption of energy in the USA, United States of America, since 1980, with projections until 2030. Let me say something straight away. For this diagram, 2008 is the present tense. I don't know which year you're watching this YouTube channel and, this, in this, and which year you are particularly watching this YouTube video. The IELTS test is telling us that consider 2008 the present tense for this report by saying that the information you have here is released or of course we should say was released but we know the information for the for the report is based on 2008 anything before 2008 which means from 1980 to 2008 is considered past and all events from 2008 till 2030 is considered future with that knowledge, let's look at the diagram or the graph. And it's a line graph or a line chart. I have one, two, three, four, five, six categories. On the x axis, I have all these years. Is there anything? Uh huh. Okay, yeah, we have history and projection. I need to find 2008. It, it should be somewhere around here. So this is 2008. This is my imaginary line. And what, what are these numbers? Quadrillion units. Okay, these are the units of energy consumption by the US citizens, by, by the people in the US, yes. Oh yeah, the categories are by fuel source. And yes, petrol and oil combined uh, have one category, coal has one category, natural gas has another category all by itself, nuclear the same, solar and wind together, and hydropower another totally separate fuel source. Okay. What I understand is that I have three, also three groups of information. One is the group be below 10, or even more accurately speaking, maybe below eight. 
And there is another group that they struggle to be the second most consumed source or fuel source throughout the years and the years to come. The competition between coal and natural gas. And there is uh, the one and only, the champion, the great petrol and oil as the champion of all times. It has been the champion and it will continue to be the champion in the years to come. This is an interesting challenge. I really seriously welcome it. Let's look at the candidate's response. There you go. Okay. All right. First issue. We need to say what type of graph it is. We need to show to the IELTS um, examiner that we know what type of graph we're talking about. It's not a pie chart, it's not a bar chart, it's not some map or flow chart. It is a line graph. So you show it. So you specifically tell the IELTS examiner that this is a line graph or a line chart illustrates, correct, the consumption of six, mm, I like it, instead of a digit, you have SIX, categories of fuel in the USA in the year 1980 to 2008, in, in the years from 1980 to, two, because it's more than, how many years are there? 20, 28, 28, 29 years? Depending if you count the, beginning and the end year uh, in this period. So if, if I just count 1,980 all the way to 2008, excluding 2008, that would be 28 years. And then I'm going to include uh, from 2008 until 2030, that would be 22 years plus one, 23 years. Because I'm counting to, to 2008 and 2030. So, yes, and their prediction until 2030. The issue with this introduction is that it's only one sentence. Right after this, I need another sentence telling me a significant point in the entire line graph. I need to know. Let, let, me, let me break down the things that are happening in my brain right now for you. In my brain, what I can understand from this is that this line graph, I need to fix that, illustrates the consumption of six categories. So yes, this line graph has six lines, six categories, and they are fuel sources. It's limited to the US. From the years 1980 to 2008 is one section and there's another section from 2008 to 2030. All right. My mind is now framed. What's missing? I don't, it doesn't mention the, the units of fuel consumption. It should have been said in the introduction that yes, the units from this to that, it ranges from this amount of consumption all the way to this minimum, maximum, and it comes in quadrillion units. Also, I need something to help me visualize. For instance, what's the highest one? Petrol and oil. Petrol and oil have throughout the period from the past till the present and uh, from the present even until 2030 has been and will continue to be undisputedly the most consumed fuel source for energy in the US. That can be a very good overall sentence, something that covers the entire diagram. But that's missing here. And uh, we cannot just write it in another body paragraph because, because body, uh, body paragraphs have their own agenda. And uh, that's totally different. We need to go deep and we need to come up with numbers, details. So that's not a good place. We either need an overall in the introduction or in the conclusion. Let's move on. To begin with, it is noticeable that all kinds of energy had an upward trend 
except hydropower, which was, we are using past tense, by the way, which was a roughly steady pattern, which had a roughly steady pattern with an amount of three quadrillion, this should be T-H-R-E-E, -E, quadrillion, is it a unite? Oh, no, un, un, unit. And this, you need to delete this S and say un, units, quadrillion units, or QU. That's a good trick. That's a very good trick. You can, uh, instead of repeating the word quadrillion units, quadrillion units, because every time you're going to say a number, you need to say it's a unit of measurement. Instead of repeating that, you can do this trick. And uh, for the first time, you write the unit in full, and you come up with an abbreviation. It can be completely made up. Really, it doesn't have to follow any patterns or any internationally acceptable or recognized abbreviation. You don't have to do that. You can do it for your own report and say, from this point on, I'm going to call this QU. Good. And then you just basically, from that point on, you can use QU as uh, the abbreviation or the short form of quadrillion units. Another important thing I want to say is that unite is a totally different word. It's a legitimate word. It's an entry in dictionaries. It's a verb to unite people. This is not a slip. If your error in spelling causes the word to change into something that actually exists, Imagine you, instead of saying comma with C-O-M-M-A, you say coma, C-O-M-A, and you, miss, you misspell it by dropping one M. Unfortunately, that is a mistake. It's not a slip. It's not an oversight. Uh, nobody at IELTS is going to give you any chance of escaping this one. You will be penalized for that. Make sure you spell things accurately, spell words accurately, please. This is a bad error. Between the year 1980 and 2030, no. What's the mistake here? Yes, you guessed it right. 2030 is not past tense. We talked about it in the past form, but then we generalize the, the concept, the message to the future. And that's a mistake. There is no way you can do it in a single sentence. It's very, 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 very difficult. We needed to say, or we needed to separate this by saying, okay, what happened or what has happened since 1980 all the way until now, 2008. And then what will happen or this trend will continue until 2030. We are saying that all kinds of energy had an upward trend. All of them generally had an upward trend, we are using past tense. And if I use past tense, we, we might say, yes, upward, yes, upward, yes. All of them had an upward trend. And from 2008 on, hydropower had a downward trend, not a stable way. Because from 2008, it went down. And let me check with natural gas went up, coal went up. Yes, all the other sources went up. Solar and wind went up, but slightly. And the same thing happened or will happen to nuclear. So we need to separate. We can't say all these patterns went up except for 
hydropower and uh, it we, we, we even cannot use vague language here and say roughly steady pattern. Yes, but uh, it, from 2008 until 2030, it is projected to go down and then it might become stable or it will become stable. As for the topic sentence, uh, this is a bit weird because uh, are we going to talk about all these energy elements here? I don't think so. We're just going to focus on some other elements. We talked a little bit about hydropower. I don't know if we are actually going to continue talking about hydropower here or not. With respect to the given graph, weird. Really, we don't need this. It's only one line chart that uh, there isn't any other graph. Yes, if there were two different graphs, of if or if you had a table and a graph, you can say, yeah, with respect to the table, with respect to the first graph, you could say that, but we only have one graph. That's, that's all we need to talk about. This is redundant. The highest usage was petrol and oil, which was beginning, which began. Why was beginning? There's, there's no need to use past progressive or past continuous. It began at 34, 35 quadrillion oh, units. Now we have a repetitive error. So the examiner will look at it now unfavorably. So it no longer is just a, an honest mistake or an error which was already bad. Now, the examiner will think that you don't know the difference between the words unite and unit. And you don't know you cannot pluralize the first noun or the, or, or the adjective uh, that comes before the main noun of, uh, of a noun phrase. Uh, we say 10 kilograms. We don't say 10 kilos gram. Sounds weird. All right, this is bad because we have repetition and it means the writer doesn't know the difference between unit and unite. Vocabulary score goes down even further. In the year 1980, with a dramatic increasing trend, while the projection, the month's projections, you can pluralize it, it's fine, demonstrate it will be raised, it will rise. Why be raised? It's unnecessary passive voice. More than 45 quadrillion units in 2030. Let me check. It started at 35. We don't talk about these ups and downs. We go to 2008 when we basically say that it was an upward trend and it, the projections show that it will continue with the upward trend all the way to 40, 45, more, maybe more than 45. What? More than 45. Yeah, okay, fine. The second, not secondly, the second rank, not ranked. The second rank was related to coal, which was 16 quadrillion units in 1980. The second rank was coal. The second rank was coal. 1980, the second rank was natural gas. 16. Yes, 16 is correct, but coal in 1980 was not the second, it was the third. That's a factual mistake, another factual mistake, oops, another factual mistake here. It is worth mentioning that it had a similar sharp climbing movement. I understand the word movement, but it's not equal to trend. Not a good fit here. Likes. Fossil fuel, like fossil fuel. You need to say like without S. 
Uh, no, I'm not saying like and subscribe like many people on YouTube. I'm saying you need to say the word like without the S, which means similar to <laughs> fossil fuels, like fossil fuel, fossil fuels, because we're talking about fossil fuel types, such as petrol and oil. While in the end, it will be reached, no, it will reach 30 quadrillion units in 2030. It will be reached means some people will reach it. Well, it's, it's not accurate. This will reach a certain number, 30 quadrillion units. Yes. Yeah, it will reach 30 quadrillion units. It is worth mentioning. Okay, the sharp, sharp it's, it, it's the same pattern, all right. Okay, I, I'm not happy with the body paragraph because I'm, I, I really didn't know the topic sentence didn't focus on these two trends. We basically covered only uh, the, the, I mean, petrol and oil and coal. And we had some inaccurate data in between. Uh, both, uh, I mean, I, I saw three errors in, in vocabulary, in grammar, also in reporting the data. So I don't know why we just chose these two. What happens to natural gas now? Why isn't it part of the team? Why isn't it reported with coal? I don't know the logic. The logic is not clear to me. Moving on to the other body paragraph. On the other hand, natural gas, okay, natural gas is here. Nuclear and solar wind energy had a gradual rise. These three are together. It is noteworthy that both nuclear and solar wind sources had the same rate of consumption in 1980. That was almost four, it should be F-O-U-R, quadrillion units. The topic sentence is telling me that we're going to focus on natural gas, nuclear, and solar and wind energy. So this sentence hasn't ended yet. I need to continue. Whereas the predictions show that people prefer to utilize nuclear more than solar and wind energy in the future. Uh, maybe we should, instead of using present simple tense here, we should have used one of the future grammatical structures that we know. Like people will prefer, uh, people are predicted to prefer. However, natural gas, okay, now we talk about, finally, we're going to talk about natural gas. Natural gas had a similar movement, not a good word here. What? However, natural gas had a similar movement. What, what's the role of however here? If something is similar to the, uh, the previous one, then why however? Can I say, I love pizza, however, Sarah loves pizza? This does, doesn't it sound weird? Why, I mean, I love pizza and Sarah loves pizza too. These two sentences do not contradict each other. So if gas, natural gas, followed the similar pattern, then good, it's, it's not the opposite of the first one. This is not a good uh, discourse marker for this particular context. Between these two sentences, we shouldn't have used however. And also we have but. Now we have but and however in, in one sentence in the short distance. But its utilization was equal to 20 quadrillion units in the year 1980. Okay, close to, all right, accurate. Which will be a rise in, this is weird, which will rise to 24 quadrillion units, quadrillion units according to projections. Let me tell you one thing. If 
I hadn't seen this image. And uh, I had just read the report. In my head, I would have imagined that natural gas started from 20 and went all the way straight to 24. There was a straight line here without these ups and downs. And uh, we are missing some data here in reporting. The report fails to acknowledge the, the race for the second place between coal and natural gas until 2008. You see, first natural gas was like this, and then coal was this, the third. For a period, they were similar. But then coal overtook natural gas. But around uh, 1998 or 1997, natural gas for a short period and the, for the last time uh, in this diagram became the second most used fuel source. And from 2006 or seven on, coal has been the, the second most consumed fuel source and it is projected to remain the second all the way until 2030. That is the way it should, it should have been, but it's not. We lost that opportunity by, by dividing the, the data into these two not logically clear paragraphs. If I were the writer, I would have chosen one body paragraph for the undisputedly champion of the whole team and also coal and natural gas. And I focused on their competition. And uh, one last paragraph devoted to nuclear and solar power, solar, wind, and hydropower. That would have made at least a little bit sense. Or I would have just uh, cut the whole thing into two paragraphs. One, the history. And I, I would just talk about everything that has taken place from 1980 all the way to 2008. And I, used, and, I, and I would use present perfect tense, and in some cases, past simple tense. And that would be my first body paragraph. And in the second body paragraph, I would have focused on just projections. What will take place? And I will freely, easily, conveniently just focus on future tenses with be going to, with will, uh, with structures like it is bound to happen, it is estimated, it is predicted, and those structures to show that these are projections. That would have made the job of address addressing this task a lot easier. To sum up, it can be clearly seen that the fossil fuel practically petrol and no, not practically, particularly uh, we have another not accurate vocabulary here. This, this is not a mistake. It's not a lightweight mistake. It's, these are bad mistakes when your spelling error creates a totally new word, which has an entry, has a place in a dictionary. This is bad. Petrol and oil was the most popular resource is not a good word here. Source, resource is different from source of energy in the USA and in the comma because the previous sentence was all in the past tense. This one is in the future. And it will be the most common source till 2030. And we spent 267 words on this task. This should have been a masterpiece. But instead, we are left with these band descriptors, yeah, sad, sad. I just focus on multiple bad vocabulary mistakes, very bad. There are some errors. There are some errors in grammar and uh, they also affect the reader. They also contribute to the details to be inappropriate or inaccurate. And uh, not to mention that, however, 
which was inaccurately used. And we also had overuse of button, however, and, the, and some discourse markers that were pointless, like moving on to or regarding what with, with respect to the diagram, I guess that, that was the discourse marker. I hope you had a lot of takeaways from this and uh, to get better inspiration, to get a good sample on the same rubric, follow the link in the description below. The link will take you to a well-written sample for you to get inspirations, get vocabulary, get grammatical structures, get ideas on how to structure your reports. And I hope I will be assessing your report next time. Until then, have a lovely day ahead. Yeah.